How to get Bionicles working in Blender. First, open up Studio. Export your project as a call of the file. Import that into Blender. Yeah, it's upside down because the Z axis is flipped. Call the files are just like that for some reason. We'll fix that in a minute, but first we gotta select everything and unparent all these weird nodes and stuff. We won't be needing that. Tap A to select everything and hit Alt P, clear parent and keep transformation. Now we can safely delete everything that isn't a Lego element. Next, select all your parts. Right click, mirror, Z global. Now everything's flipped back around. Okay, time to clean up these models. It can get a little messy. For each object, select everything in edit mode, tap M on your keyboard, and merge vertices by distance. That removed nearly 2,000 vertices that were overlapping. Next, select all your faces, right click, and convert tries to quads. It's not great, but it cleans it up a little more. There's still a visible seam because some verts are still overlapping. Let's fix those manually by selecting a group of vertices, tapping M, and merging at center. I'm gonna repeat that process along this edge loop to take care of any visible seams. Now that's taken care of, time to smooth out the shading. Go into Object Data Properties and turn on Auto Smooth. Different masks can be a little more messy in some areas, so feel free to clean them up as you see fit. If things are looking too jagged, I like to move stuff around and add bevels here and there to round out the edges. For Kanohi masks, I'll also add a bevel modifier if I can get away with it. A little bevel can go a long way. Repeat this process for each part. When you export a studio model as a call of the file, duplicate parts are grouped together for some reason. So when you're done, just make sure to ungroup them in object data properties by hitting that number icon. Otherwise, you won't be able to apply rotation or scale. But you can save time by doing this after you fix geometry on a group of pieces. At this point, I like to add materials. For LEGO stuff, I always check out the official hex colors. Rebreakable.com has a database of LEGO colors, which I'll link to this video. That way you can just copy-paste the hex color into a new principled shader. For the eyes, let's model a shape that can go inside the brain and use an emission shader to make it glow. I like to go into the node editor and hook it up to a gradient texture with a color ramp to add some variation to the glow. If you have Node Wrangler enabled, you can just hit Ctrl T on the gradient texture to control the mapping. This looks great in Eevee with some bloom. Now we're ready to start rigging. Not sure how to do gear functions or deform the mesh, so gotta keep it simple. Select the pelvis axle and use the shortcut Shift S and cursor to selected to target the 3D cursor. Hit Shift A and add a single bone. Select the bone and go into Object Properties. Under Viewport Display, select In Front. Now the armature will always be visible through the model. Go into Edit Mode and move the tail of the bone up to the collar area. Hit E to extrude bones and Alt P to disconnect bones. I use the 3D cursor to align bones to various joints. To do this, select the object, use the Shift S shortcut and cursor to select it. Then select the bone in Edit Mode and hit Selection to Cursor. In Object Mode, the cursor to selected corresponds to the object's origin point, but in Edit Mode, you can select multiple vertices and target the center between them. This is super helpful when aligning ball joints. If you ever need to change the origin point of an object, target your 3D cursor in Edit Mode to where you want it, and in the Object Panel, set Origin to 3D Cursor. Once you got all the bones in place for one side, you can just mirror everything over to save time. But first, go ahead and name each bone. Then select the bones you want to mirror, right click, names, auto name left right. Then right click and symmetrize. If your character is asymmetrical, just make sure to correct the other side as needed. Either way, I always like to double check, just to make sure all the right side bones are aligned to the joints. Before parenting objects to bones, be sure to parent any objects that should stay attached and won't have any articulation. Select the child, then the object you want to parent to. Hit Ctrl P and select Object Keep Transform. To parent objects to bones, select the object, then select the armature, and go into Pose Mode. It's kinda like Object Mode or Edit Mode, but for posing bones. Now select the bone of choice and hit Ctrl P Bone to parent the object to the bone. Repeat this for all bones and you're good to go. Don't be afraid to experiment and rig things up that can't move on the actual toy. 
Real world physics are for losers, and clipping is totally fine as long as it's hidden. I split up this hip axle and use that as a joint, why not? Just be sure to switch to local transform for posing bones. Makes the angles a little easier. So, now it's time to bring your creations to life in the digital world. This is Glaucon, signing off.